Uh, hello everyone and thank you for coming on to my talk today. Uh, my name is Faye and I, as Eleanor said, I'm one of the businesses that are currently within the formation zone. I've been asked to sort of give a talk based on my entrepreneurial journey and setting up my business, which is called Great Thinking, and what sort of motivated me to get up and actually, you know, you know, start the business. So a little bit about myself. So Great Thinking is a sustainable tech business, which basically means we create sort of eco-friendly technology for consumers, which basically offers both, you know, businessmen and women the opportunity to, you know, be more sustainable in a way that is feasible for them and works for them. In addition to running my business, I'm also a graduate in Plymouth University Business Management student and an inventor as well. So as part of my thinking, I've invented both the products which we, both have, which we have developed and are currently looking to offer. So while an inventor is probably the official term for what I do, I literally tend to think of myself more as just the guy off loads of ideas, which some of which you know I put into the form of products and others have gone into other things, sort of developing the logo and everything. So the start of my business journey probably started, I think, when I was 12 years old and I started to sell sweets to kids my own age at school. Uh, back in the day, team entrepreneurship was really more of a hobby for me rather than something that I considered as a proper career option. But through the experiences that I had in selling sweets over the years, I did manage to learn a few things about business, such as the importance of good customer service especially in the case of providing good customer service to somebody like a bully who do something about it, and also the importance of supply and demand and always looking to supply actual, you know, sweets and just goods that people wanted to buy. Because if I was to buy something that you know, no one was really interested in, I'd just be left with a bunch of stock. So yeah, at the age of 16, I've, I had my first ever interview, which was with Marks and Spencers. As you can probably guess by the title on that slide, it didn't go too well for me. As during the interview, I was told that I sort of gave the idea that you know my creativity was what was the best thing about me and what really helped me to stand out against the next candidate. Unfortunately, I was told by the interviewer that nobody had really ever looked to hire me as in business for having creative ideas. So. I did learn a lot through the actual process. First of all, that I'm not entirely sure where exactly she got her business degree from, but I can think of a ton of business people who have faced successful businesses like Richard Branson off of being creative and not, you know, going with the norm. But I did learn that the best opportunities in life weren't going to just fall on my lap or just pop up on my screen like a pop up like that. I, can, I would have to go out and earn them. So, yeah, so at that point, I really sort of wanted to. I was given a real sort of drive to try and prove this into a one that you know, if you don't believe in me at this particular point, if you don't believe I can make something out of what I, you know, think I'm good at, I'm gonna go out there and try and prove you wrong. However, in hindsight, it was definitely a positive thing for me to get this sort of criticism at this early age, as it sort of helped me to realize that not everyone's gonna be supportive of the type of products that I develop or the things that I do. But you know, at some points, that criticism is either going to help me in improving what I do and what products that I make, or it's going to you know teach me how to sort of fit this in and be able to deal with criticism that I would get. So at this point onwards, I decided that you know I was I was sort of determined at the stage that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to start my own business, so I decided that I would try and invest in myself as a creative thinker and apply what I thought I was good at into products, which would end up helping people. So a few months later, at 16, I sort of developed my first product, which is shown here. It's a phone stand, which is made from recycled plastic, which I now call the Eco Stand. I uh, literally, I just came up with it because I was constantly sort of, I had a really messy desk when I was younger, and I was constantly sort of losing my phone behind loads of papers that I had during my GCSEs. So I just thought it'd be nice to have a phone stand, which would, you know, let me see where exactly it was. However, leading on from that, I actually decided that, you know, I would try and sell the product during the young enterprise scheme, which I did when I was 16, and I got a sort of little bit of mild success. I managed to sell it to a bunch of stores in my hometown of Northern Keynes, to businesses that were looking for like an innovative marketing opportunity, so I could sort of brand it with their own logo and they could give it away as like a, something different to the regular business cards that you tend to get. And as part of that, I, at the end of the year for Young Enterprise, I was fortunate enough to win the Individual Achievement Award for my sort of task, or for my project. And I 
as well as that, I got offered my first ever job as a result of this. So my, the manager of one of the stores that I was selling the phone stand to was actually came along to the awards ceremony for my enterprise and saw me there and sort of offered me my first summer job afterwards, which just already sort of proves the interim one that nobody would look to hire me for being creative. <laughs> So yeah, when I turned 17, my family went on a trip back to my home country of Nigeria. And while I was there, I was really sort of perplexed that despite the fact that there was like almost 40 degree heat, nobody was using solar energy. No one was looking to use, you know, renewable energy like that, despite there was such wide potential for it there. I was just wondering why that was the case. I sort of realized by talking to people there that a lot of the sort of solar-based products or the way that people view solar energy is in something that's you know too large scale for the smaller business people to actually take hold of. It's not something that they can easily adopt because it was either too expensive or too inconvenient for them to use. So at that point, and sort of, and after looking at this regular phone stand I made, I decided that my speciality was going to be in sort of making these like larger ideas and converting them into a smaller sort of product which people could use would make it easier for smaller businessmen to start implementing. So that's when I sort of had my light bulb moment and I started right thinking as it's sort of known as today sort of started and with that also I also started my product I've been developing for the last few years called the Solar Dock, which this is the photo of a very rough prototype that I made. I literally stole my mom's sort of tablet stand, put a solar panel on it, and just had a battery attached to it just to prove that the concept would work. So when I was starting university, as a sort of 18, 19 year old, there were only two sort of main factors that I was looking for at the university. First of all, as it was the first opportunity for me to leave home, I wanted the opportunity, I wanted the chance to, you know, actually leave home and be as far away from my parents and my family as humanly possible. I set that target of being at a minimum of four hours away from all the people. <laughs> and in addition to that, I also wanted a university that would support me with my business idea, even though I wasn't entirely sure where it would lead me to. And for those of you wondering, Plymouth is a six hour journey from where I live, so <laughs> it's definitely met both of those. So when I started university, I did have the idea, but I realized that in my current form as a 19 year old, I wasn't really in a position where I didn't really have the qualifications to develop the type of product that I was hoping to develop. So I, I realized that, you know, at that stage, it would be really crucial for me to try and, you know, if I didn't, if I didn't have the skills, to go out there and make what I wanted to make and even to connect with people who could. So I literally, in my first year, I went to all the possible events that I could. I took part in networking opportunities for local designers in order to see if anyone would help me design my idea or consult with me on it and what I could do and improve. In addition to this, I took part in loads of business competitions like uh, Game <coughs> which I'll talk about later and other ones. And although taking part in all the events that I have could seem a bit, I don't know, maybe tedious to some, the thing that really kept me going was really being able to see the progress that I was making of my products and my actual logo, which hopefully you can see, or you would agree, that I have made some progress for the, for the good <laughs> in comparison to what I had back in the day. So one of the most important competitions that I took part in during my university career was called the Range Business Plan Competition. And as part of this, I was given the opportunity alongside other finalists to pitch my business idea to billionaire and sort of founder of the Range, Chris Dawson. This was a huge opportunity for me, and it's something that I look back about upon, you know, with a smile, because it really sort of helped me to boost my confidence. Because before then, I, I'm a very sort of introverted person, and before then, I didn't want to. I didn't sort of believe in what I was doing at all. I was just like, oh yeah, I just make this because you know it's what I enjoy doing, but I didn't think anybody else would be that interested in it. However, after pitching to Chris Dawson, he gave me the compliment that he thought it was a fantastic idea and I should keep going with it, which was a huge confidence booster for me. In addition to that, I got with what is by far my best sort of prize for taking part in the competition, because after we pitched to Chris Dawson at the Range headquarters, he gave us all a ride home and his Rolls Royce Phantom back into uni, and I literally got to see a few of my mates on my way and just wave at them. <laughs> <laughs> Another competition which has helped teach me a lot on my journey to where I am today is taking part in a game suit competition, which will be taken, which will be after this as well. I took part in the first game suit, which was last year, 
And all, I, although I didn't win the competition, I did learn a lot from it, such as the importance of sometimes, you know, learning that sometimes it is important to, or it's better for me to fail at certain points, as long as I don't fail on a large scale, because there's a lot I can learn through my failures. Taking part in game two helped me to sort of get over my initial fear of public speaking because before then, any sort of opportunity to talk to any crowd, I would just be cut off by it. I hated public speaking, it was not something I was interested in at all. But being able to talk to a room full of you know, business people who were looking to find out more about my business helped me to start getting over that. In addition, taking part in soup also helped me to validate my idea within that business community and find out what I can improve about it and to also help me get a bit of recognition. So whenever people tend to see me out on the street, I'm not saying that I'm famous or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying if I do happen to get recognized, it would be, you know, for doing game soup. And by people would say, hey, you're the guy that did soup, which hopefully will change to, hey, you're the guy who did future sync after today, but we'll see. <laughs> so I didn't think it would be fair to sort of talk about my business journey if I didn't give like a quick story about my family. I'm so thankful for, you know, the family I've had. They've been my biggest sort of, you know, looking for the right words. Motivators, would that be the right words? But yeah, they've always been there for me, and I, I'm pretty sure that I would not be in the position that I am today if it wasn't for them. And an example of this would be with the ego stand. When I was developing the ego stand, it didn't look anything like what it looks like today. It looks like that. So I used to spend time at after school just heating, you know, a sheet of plastic and sort of molding it into one shape. You couldn't, you know, adjust it or anything like that. It was literally just a phone holder. It wasn't even something you could charge your phone on. But I showed it to my mom and her face literally lit up. And I was sort of really questioning. It was like, it lit up so much that I was sort of questioning, like, mom, this isn't that good. And then she just went to me. But she really motivated me to keep going with it. She came off, you know, she was just like, oh yeah, this is great. I absolutely love it. It would be even better if you were to, you know, make it so that you could adjust this. And she sort of gave me little pointers on how I can improve the products. And that's how it sort of got into the stage it is at now. So that sort of brings me to the current day where I'm not sort of, I'm still hoping to continue with my business and continue making products into the future. Uh, that starts with the opportunity to speak to Future Sync today. I'd like uh, to say a quick thank you to the guys that invited me down here. In addition to that, in the next month, I'll be developing the last prop version of the solar dock, which unfortunately I can bring in today, but I do have an older prototype at my exhibition stand, which is in the daily building. And earlier this week, I was fortunate enough to make it to the final shortlist for this competition called Shell Livewire Smart Futures, which gives one business the opportunity to pitch against, well, I'm going to be pitching against four other startups to win a 5K grant, which would go a long way and basically give me the funds that I need to be able to launch the product at the end of this summer. And in addition to, you know, being a technology brand, I wanted Bright Thinking to be sort of like a platform for sustainability and promoting eco-friendliness. So thank you for listening to my talk. If you guys want to find out more about the products that I've made, I don't know if I'm going to have any time for questions, but I also have an exhibition stand in the daily building, like I said before. If you guys happen to come across Bright Thinking, I would really appreciate if you would help vote for me in the Shell Livewire competition. Um, we also have social media, Facebook and Twitter. And if you're going to see, I want to do a quick shout out for a friend of mine. His name's Jerome and he's going to be pitching his business early. He has three other great startups. So yeah, thank you for listening. That's the diary of an aspiring entrepreneur.